The power of Mother Nature to destroy and rebuild, it's kind of always fascinated me. Moments of rebirth and renewal, they can be awe-inspiring. Just imagine the amount of energy it takes to burn down an entire forest. The destructive force within this, it's immense. But in the immediate aftermath, what's left is a barren wasteland, devoid of life, devoid of color. But once again, Mother Nature uses her power to rebuild what was lost. And the forest begins to grow. And life and color return, maybe even a little bit stronger. Mother Nature's power to destroy and to rebuild, it's present in each of us. And we can harness it to heal ourselves, both emotionally and physically. And I tell you this from my own personal experience. When I was 10 years old, my life was filled joyfully with two loving and supportive parents and an idolized older brother. Andy could do anything. He was brilliant. He was a force of nature. Truthfully, growing up in his shadow then and even now can be difficult. But my family's world changed forever just a year later when the all-consuming destructive force of cancer was found within Andy. Andy was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Now, even back then, this was thought to be a treatable, curable disease. 60, 70% of children could be cured with chemotherapy alone. But what's this number matter when you're in the other 30%? Andy died of his disease at 13, and it changed everything. The all-consuming, destructive force of cancer took my brother, and it overwhelmed me. And it overwhelmed my parents, my family, But I told myself that it doesn't have to be this way. It's kind of hard to describe to anyone that hasn't been through this journey just what it's like. How the all-consuming loss steals your breath and your thoughts for decades. No, that, that's not really true. For me, it's, it's changed me for life. It's kind of like the fire that denudes the mountain. And how the force that it takes the thing to recognize in this moment, the thing to recognize in tragedy, is the immense power within this destructive force. For me, it gave me energy to regain purpose. It gave me the power to drive myself to the, finding the cure that took for the disease that took my brother. I told myself, that no one should lay witness to what I saw, that no family should go down this journey. I believe that I alone must be part of the solution and that only action would speak to the power, the force inside me that it demanded. It drove my education into science. It caused me to stay up just a little bit later at night to study. And it drove my career 
into constant networking events and presentations, and it oriented my career in science in the service of medicine. First at the National Inst Cancer Institute, where I learned the joy of discovery. Then at small biotech companies and large pharmaceutical companies, where I learned what it took to make a brand new medicine and bring it to patients. It was at one of these companies where I learned the incredible healing power of the human cell to heal us. My boss at the time and I were at a meeting with physician scientists at the University of Pennsylvania. And they had discovered a way to use the human cell to heal. Their idea was to take specialized cells, immune cells, from cancer patients' bodies, bring them back to the lab and arm them with new instructions how to find and kill the cancer within their body. They then took these cells and infused them back into the very same cancer patient. The, the UPenn scientists had discovered a way to treat kids with ALL. This was the very same disease that took my brother. And they had shown that more than 90% of the sickest kids, just like Andy, they could be cured. This was it. This was the moment, this was the action I had sought on my journey. I told myself, lean in now. Be courageous, use cells to treat disease, all kinds of diseases. I was asked at that moment to lead a new team to help bring this new discovery to late stage clinical trials and to the patients that needed it most. Now, this discovery had immense impact on patients' lives, but it's a little bit clunky and it kind of has some limitations. But you know, first time inventions, they often do. But just at the same time as our team was working through the kinks of how to do this, a lab in a half a world away in Japan had discovered for the very first time that you could, you could take a cell from the adult human body and reprogram it to be like and act like some of the cells from our earliest embryo. Essentially, they had discovered that you could take a blood cell or a skin cell from us and turn it into a stem cell. And that these stem cells can be brought to the lab to make any of the cells of our body in huge vats indefinitely. Now, the nerdy scientist in me loved this. This was super cool. But so what? What do we do with this? Well, this got people thinking. From the decades of research that had been done in the laboratories to study how an embryo goes to a fully functioning human adult. How the cells use the instructions to become specialized cells, like brain cells and cardiac cells. And at this moment, what we were able to learn and to do from these specialized cells, could we regrow them in the lab, figure out how to manufacture them at scale, and then use them to treat disease and restore function to the body? Well, I'm here to tell you this, in fact, is happening in labs and hospitals and clinics all across the world. We're working in Parkinson's disease, in cardiac disease, in diabetes, and even in blindness. I want to tell you about a story that I know firsthand, and that's in Parkinson's disease. In Parkinson's disease, a patient might walk into the doctor's office and describe sort of a fitless sleep, a hard night, not good sleep. We probably all can describe that night. <laughs> they, all, they also might describe that it, it's just a little bit harder to get up out of the chair and walk across the room than it used to be. Some patients might even show up with the classic sign that we all recognize of a tremor in a single hand or a foot. At that moment, when the patient becomes diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, 
they've already lost 60 to 80% of the specialized cells in their brain that control movement. That's it, they're dead. They're gone. At this time, the physician will probably prescribe a pill, actually a set of pills. And these pills will help the patient feel better, actually a lot better. And if they're lucky, they get maybe feeling better for two or three years, some even a decade. But the patient and the doctor both know the journey ahead. And sadly, so do you and I. We all know someone that's been touched by a neurological degenerative disorder. And the medicines begin to lose their efficacy and their effect over time. And the journey in Parkinson's or any neurodegenerative disease, it's a long, painful journey to death. But maybe it doesn't have to be this way. What if we could take the knowledge and the technical skills required to grow these cells, these specialized cells, in the lab at scale and then return them to the patients? We call this regenerative medicine. And it's, you're not going to go to your medicine cabinet and pull it off the shelf. You probably won't head to the pharmacy and get this month's refill. In fact, in most instances, we envision these as being one-time treatments. I kind of envision a day where you show up to the doctor's office and you complain about a symptom or a pain and he turns or they turn to their book, The Physician's Desk Reference. And they usually look for a pill or a prescription that they give you. I envision a day where instead they turn to their screen and they scroll through all the tissues and the cells that they can give back to us to restore our health. Like the forest fire that denudes the mountaintop. We can rebuild hope, purpose, and action. And with that, regrow what once was lost, perhaps even a little bit stronger than when it was before. Andy, I wore your bracelet tonight because I wanted you to be with me. I wanted to tell you that we're curing you today and that you're still giving me the power and the energy to bring hope to so many patients and families that need it by the life that you so shortly lived so well, but especially by your death. Thank you. <laughs>